Welcome scientists, it's G. from Butterfly Garden. We've been talking about the kelp forest this week and sea otters. Today we are going to read a story about an oil spill which sometimes happens in the ocean and um, after we read the story we are going to do an oil spill experiment. So let's get ready. The story is called Oil Spill by Melvin Berger illustrated by Paul Marocca. The night of March 24th, 1989, was dark and cold. A huge black oil tanker glided out of the port of Valdez, Alaska. Painted on its bow was its name, Exxon Valdez. The Exxon Valdez floated low in the water. About 50 million gallons of crude oil weighed it down. The huge tanker slowly sailed out into Prince William Sound, and then suddenly it happened. Crunch. The ship slammed into an underwater reef. Thick black oil flowed out of Exxon Valdez's smashed tanks. It poured into the dark water. The Exxon Valdez spilled out 11 million gallons of oil. That much oil could fill over 1,000 big swimming pools. The sticky oil soon covered 11,000 square miles of ocean water. That is an area as big as the state of Maryland. It damaged about 1,250 miles of Alaska's coastline. That is longer than the entire Atlantic coast of the United States. The oil stuck to the feathers of many ducks, geese, and other seabirds. The birds couldn't swim or fly, and over 300,000 died. Oil got into the bodies of fish, shrimp, and crabs. No one knows how many of them were killed. Sea otters, sea lions, and killer whales swallowed oil. They breathed the poisonous fumes. Their bodies were coated with oil. Thousands of these marine mammals died. The spill from the Exxon Valdez was one of the worst in our country's history, but it was not the only one. An oil spill occurs somewhere in the world almost every day of the year. Oil spills have many causes. Some are accidents. A tanker like the Exxon Valdez runs aground or collides with another ship. Workers make mistakes as a tanker is being loaded or unloaded. An undersea oil wall starts to leak, or a tank or a pipe breaks at a shore oil terminal. Some oil spills occur on purpose. The tanker captain tells the workers to clean out the tanks. Sometimes they flush the old oil into the sea. The causes of oil spills differ but the result is the same. The oil spreads out, it floats on top of the water. Experts on oil spills rush to the scene. They start to clean up the mess. Their first job is to stop the oil from spreading. They put a boom around the spill. The boom is like a collar. It keeps the oil in one place. For smaller spills, the experts may call for a skimmer. There are several kinds of skimmers. One type works like a giant vacuum cleaner. It sucks up the oil from the water. Sometimes the oil the skimmer collects can be used again. For some small spills, experts place special pads on top of the oil. The pads are like sponges. They soak up the oil. Then they have to get rid of the soaked up oil. For larger spills, the experts may set the oil on fire, but the fire sends smoke and gas into the air and leaves ash in the water. Cleanup crews also use chemicals to get rid of large oil spills. People aboard planes or boats spread the chemicals on the oil. Some chemicals break the oil into tiny bits. The tiny bits mix with the water. Other chemicals make the oil come together. The oil forms a layer like a sheet of rubber. One type of skimmer lifts the sheet of oil and oily debris out of the water. Chemicals make the oil less harmful, but they add poisons to the water. In time, the oil from most spills drifts up onto the shore. 
scientists spray the rocks and sand with hot water to wash the oil back into the sea. But the hot spray may also push the oil further into the rocks and sand. Here, the oil can harm plants and animals that live on the shore. Scientists sometimes add bacteria to the oil along the shore. The bacteria eat the soil and change it into harmless substances, but it would take huge amounts of bacteria to get rid of a big oil spill. Sometimes the experts decide that no action is the best way to treat an oil spill. The wind and waves mix the oil and water together. It is like mixing oil and vinegar to make salad dressing. In time, much of the oil disappears. Oil spills are major disasters. Slowly, scientists are learning how to clean them up. They are learning how to prevent spills. How can we help to prevent oil spills too? We can use less oil. If we use less oil, there will be fewer oil tankers in the oceans. Then the chance of oil spills will not be as great. One way to save oil is to use less electricity. Electricity is often produced by burning oil. Less electricity means less oil. Another way to cut oil needs is to use less gasoline, which is made from oil. That means driving smaller cars and staying within the speed limit. We can also write letters to members of Congress, tell them we want new laws to prevent oil spills. Oil tankers should have double hulls. If the outer hull is damaged, the inner one will still hold the oil. Tankers should have the most modern radar, radio, and other safety systems. This will help to prevent collisions. Experts should teach tanker crews how to handle oil spills. Booms, skimmers, chemicals, and bacteria should be ready for emergencies all around the world. So let's take a look at just how hard it is to clean up an oil spill. Okay, scientists, the book we just read tells the story of the Exxon Valdez oil spill, which happened in the 1990s. The solutions offered in the book are dated. Recent technological advancement allows us to break from using oil and instead use solar, wind, and hydroelectric sources of energy. Things like electric cars and solar panels on our roofs help us to eliminate the need for oil altogether so that tragedies like oil spills won't happen anymore. Let's see just how hard it is to clean up an oil spill. Here's our little ocean with our sea creatures living happily in the water. And sometimes there are boats that also use the water. Things look great, but then an oil spill happens. Do you see the pools of oil in the water? Let's see if we can clean up the oil spill. Adele is here to help me. She's going to use some tools to try to clean up the oil spill. Would you like to start with the paper, Adele? Yes. So let's see if the paper will absorb some of that oil. Not a lot. No, it looks like it's getting on there, but it's not helping it. Much. It's not really helping eliminate that oil. Okay. Let's, um, and now what would you like to try next? The feather. Okay. Let's see. Will the feather absorb? What do you think? A bit more Stick than the Stick it all paper, the way in there. Let's see. It's a bit more than the paper, but it's still not really helping that much. Yeah. Now, this is what happens. It does get in there, but yeah, you're right. It's not really effective, is it? There's still lots of oil, but this is what happens when oil gets on the birds that live in the water and land in the water on their um, wings. This is what happens to the animals that live in the water, like the sea otters, when the oil gets into their fur. All right, we'll take that and put that aside. 
Now we have some other tools. We have a ladle and also a sponge that Adele's gonna use to see if she can clean up this oil spill. That gets a lot more, but then it also takes out some of the water. Mm-hmm, yeah. Let's see, take another big scoopful. Can you try to get it all? Yeah, it takes care of some, but there's still there's still quite a bit of oil. And do you see how the oil kind of disperses? And even though there's a big pool of oil here, there's a lot of little pools of oil. Okay, let's put that to the side and see if we can do something with the sponge. Will the sponge help absorb some of that oil? Scientists use lots of different tools to try to absorb the oil when an oil spill happens. I think this is the one that does it the most. You think it's taking care of it the most? I yeah. still see lots of oil though. I expected that the sponge would be a better solution. You can see though that it still has a lot of oil on it. Yeah, it is absorbing, but there's still tons of oil and it takes it would take a long time to get all the oil out of a small bucket. Now imagine the ocean. Okay, so Adele, I'm gonna have you put that to the side. Thank you. And I'm going to try something. I'm going to try something else. I'm gonna put a drop or two of dish soap to see what happens to the oil spill when we add dish soap. Whoa, what just happened there? Did you see that big oil spill move and break apart? Let's see if I add a little bit more over here what happens. I'm gonna to try to get this big blob here. So it looks like it took care of some of the oil, but there's still a lot of oil, little, little oil bubbles here and there. Um, dish soap is made to cut grease from the dishes. So after you have like a pasta dinner and you have a lot of oil uh, from the pasta and the tomato sauce, your parents or adults use dish soap to clean those dishes and get all that oil off the pans and off the plates. So it works similarly with oil in a body of water. So I'd love for you to keep experimenting. See how you can soak up that oil, see what works with things that you have around the house, and then leave some comments for me and let me know what did you try and let me know if something worked better than something else. Thanks for joining us today.